Hello everybody and welcome to another Friday new product post. We've got a couple new things this week, so let's see what my picks are for the week. So first up, we've got this handy little pull chain switch. Let's check it out. We've got this um, 10 inch long, you know, beaded little chain. We've got six inch long bare wires. And as you can see, it's just your standard classic pull chain. So, you know, this is the same kind of thing you would see hanging from a light switch, you know, in some dimly lit basement in a horror movie. Um, the only thing about this switch is it doesn't really have any mounting on it, but watch this. If we just unscrew this, you can see that we've got a gap big enough here that you could use that to panel mount this switch. So you could just unscrew that, mount that in your panel, and there you go. You have a nice little pull switch. And these things are rated for, well, like 6 amps at 125 volts, so, you know, pretty good amount of current can run through these. So um, if you're looking for a nice little pull chain switch, check out this guy. Next up, we've got this lovely little stomp switch. Um, this switch might be familiar to some of you. This is what's found in like guitar effects pedals and things like that. It is not your normal like little toggle switch. It's made for more kind of, you know, heavy duty abuse, hence the stomp switch. So you'd mount this in a panel and you could use like your foot or, you know, your fist to actuate this thing. And it has a nice solid click to it, um, which is quite nice. And it is a um, dual pull, dual throw. So you can see on there, we've got um, six connections. So you'd connect there and you can go to either one. Um, it's got a nice little mounting tab on here and it actually, it has a nice weight to it and a nice substance to it. So, you know, this is a nice solid switch. So if you need something where, you know, you're worried about like a little dinky switch that you're actuating, you need something a little bit more substantial, check out this guy. Here we have yet another rocker switch. Um, this guy is round. Um, it has these little snap-in tabs, um, as you can see. And round is nice because it's really easy to drill a round hole. It is significantly more difficult to drill a rectangular or square hole. So you can just you know, drill a nice round hole, snap this in, and you're good. Um, this is an SPST, which means it has a single pole, and it goes to a single throw, so just on, off. Um, hey, yet the interesting thing about this switch is it actually has a blue LED inside. So we've got three terminals on the bottom of this. And we've got one that's a ground, one that's a positive, and then the other is the actual, you know, switch for this. And so with this 9 volt battery, let's hook it up and I'll show you what it looks like. So we've got it hooked up and it's off. And when we turn it on, Boom, we have a nice little light glowing. So it works really well as just this um, you know, basic indicator to let you know that something is on or something that's off. So these are cool and great little blue light. And lastly, we've got yet another robot platform. This is the iRacer. Let me slide over here. Uh, as you can see, this has four wheels. It is in the form factor of a car and it's got this nice little plastic shell for the top. The interesting thing about this um, platform is it's got a lot of the stuff that you already need and it's basically made for um, hacking or separate sensors or something like that. Um, this main board here that we've got has Bluetooth on it. Um, it's got an Atmega 64, I think it is. Um, we've got a ISP header so you can reprogram that. And in additionally, we have all the software, firmware, and everything like that on the website so you can completely hack this, reprogram it, do whatever you want. Um, we've also got a couple interesting things to note. We've got a TX and an RX header there so you can actually hack into the Bluetooth stream. Um, and then somewhere around here, over here, we have an ADC1, ADC2, and some voltage. So you could actually throw some analog sensors on this and reprogram the IC and actually hack this to where you had sensors on the front and then using the Bluetooth stream that it has, you could you know, make your own custom thing. Um, the other nice thing about this robot is it comes with everything. It comes with a battery, it comes with both of the motors, it comes with this whole thing with the case, it even comes with some stickers and decal. And on the bottom here, we've got a little jack that you plug into your USB and that's how it charges. So it has a built-in charging circuit. So it, it's kind of worth it just for that board alone. Um, additionally, this also comes with a free Android app. So you can pull out your phone, load the Android app, and using your phone, you can drive this thing around. It has a very simple Bluetooth um, protocol that it uses, and you're basically just sending it hex commands over Bluetooth into the module, 
and using those simple hex commands, you can drive it forward, drive it backward, or turn, all that good stuff. So really easy to hack into. Uh, we've actually got an Android app running for this, so we can show you that, and we've also got it running through a terminal with a 9 off sensor stick um, connected. So let's go into my office and play with this. So here we've got the iRacer. Um, we've got it turned on, as you might be able to see. Uh, we've got it paired with an Android phone, We're running the Dagu Android app, and all we have to do is set it down, hit the button, and she drives. And also in this app, we can change it over to sensor mode. Let's call it sensor mode. We hit that, and we actually use the phone to drive it like that. <laughs> so there you have it. That is how to control the car with the Android app. Now, let's say you want to do your own custom control and you don't want to use the Android app. You want to do something just directly with Bluetooth. What we've done is we've taken a 9 off sensor stick and we've combined it with an Arduino to create our own controller. This controller has a 9 off sensor stick, as I said, with an Arduino inside this handy little case. When we connect this to our computer, we'll take the values of the 9 off sensor stick, output it, and turn those values into something that this can read. Um, this reads hex values that are coming off Bluetooth, so we read that into the computer, translate those values, spit them back out as commands for the car. So here we go, we have these paired together. We've got this hooked back into the computer. This isn't the most elegant way to do it, but it is the quickest, down, dirtiest way to do it. So we're spitting commands out of this back to a computer that is going into a terminal and then spitting that out through Bluetooth. And as you can see, we can control the car. Ish. So I think we've demonstrated I'm not very good at driving this thing, but it's pretty quick. And if you get the right kind of control system down for it, you can actually drive it pretty well. Um, it works really well on carpet. It seems to have plenty of power. And with the built-in charger and everything, it's a steal. So check out the iRacer. So there you have it. This is our lovely selection for this week um, for this Friday's new product post. As always, we have even more new products on the website, so go ahead and check that out. Um, these are just my picks for this week. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next week with another round of new products and another Friday new product post.